and welcome back to a new reading vlog. I feel like I should address the elephant in the room, which is my makeup. I don't know why a lot of my vlogs have started with me just looking like super duper extra, but I'm going to see Stray Kids again uh, later today. And so I'm already ready for that to happen. And so <laughs> I thought, why not start the vlog, but also address why I look like I'm celebrating Halloween at the end of March. I want to go over some reading plans that I have for this week. I've got a fun little week ahead of me. I saw Stray Kids last night. I'm seeing Stray Kids again today. I will unfortunately subject you to more concert clips, so feel free to skip those. I will definitely put a timestamp. And I have a fun little TBR planned, and I have one of my best friends coming over. So fun reading week ahead of me. I'm like looking around trying to pick like what book I want to show first. Um, let's start with Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. I started this book in my last vlog and unfortunately did not have time to finish it and so I decided that hey I kind of want to finish it because I'm in the middle of it. I'm on page 102 so three more pages in than I was in the last vlog where I ended and this is actually the book I'm going to be reading this morning and I'll probably read like a little bit of it. I kind of want to take a nap. I am exhausted. Going to concerts two days in a row is going to take me out but this book has already had some really fun action sequences. I really do enjoy Elizabeth and Nathaniel's character. I hope there's romance in this book. I honestly don't know. And I have yet to check and I still haven't read like the inside dust jacket or whatever. So I don't even know what this book is about. I just know that a lot of people have said I would like it. And by a lot of people, I mean like Katie and Darcy. So there's that. I also have Stormglass by Jeff Wheeler. This is the Patreon book club book for March and I really need to read it this week. This is one of the books that have an actual deadline on it and this book is about two sisters. I'm sorry, they're not sisters. <laughs> two individuals who are essentially like the polar opposite in terms of class. So we have a high class person who is living up in these floating mountains in a castle and then we have the people down below who are poor and actually like keeping the system running for these rich people can thrive. So you know the rich get richer and the poor stay poor situation and apparently they want to they both want what the other have the person up here is like sick of all the rules and regulations and wants to be more free and then the person down below is just sick of being stuck being poor uh that's what i've gathered from the synopsis and it seems like an interesting concept however a lot of members in the book club have said that it's not fantastic so far so i'm not like thrilled to start this book but i really really hope i enjoy it because the rest of the covers of this series are really really pretty and so i would love to collect them but if it's not good I'm gonna unhaul it. Then I really want to pick up Orange. Katie recently read it when she was over and borrowed my copy and I was like I haven't even read this copy myself and so I want that to happen. And recently Flossie whom I'm actually going to meet in Japan, it's a whole situation but she had picked this up recently and it made me want to pick it up myself because I've read this multiple times. It was the first ever manga I read and it is also my favorite manga so I just want to dive back in. I always cry during this so I'm not sure how that will fare but essentially this is the bind up of the first three volumes. However they don't actually sell English versions separately so I actually own the Japan the Japan, the Japanese versions here right behind me. So that is also on my TBR in case I need like a little manga break. This TBR I'm realizing is very ambitious, especially since like my past few vlogs, I have not been in a reading mood, but I recently read Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson and that like cured my book slump and I'm on such a reader's high. Plus, like I mentioned, my best friend Lexi is coming over and we plan on doing not necessarily like a 24 hour readathon, but we do typically read quite a bit when we are together. And so I wanted to kind of give myself some selections of books that I might pick up. And I'm really in the mood to actually start Mistborn and that is The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. This is book one of Mistborn. After reading Warbreaker, I'm seriously in the mood to dive into more fantasy and I want to ride that high because it's not often I will feel like picking up an over 600 page book, but that's kind of where I'm at. So this is my little, I would say little, but this is not a little TBR. This is quite a bit, but it is going to be a week reading vlog. And yeah, I hope I can get some good reading done. I'm going to actually sit and read Sorcery of Thorns just for a little bit. And then I might update you on my progress before I go to the concert and subject you to more concert clips. I didn't want to talk about Stray Kids in the intro because I don't want to subject you to that right away. I wanted to give you a little bit of reading content before I bombard you with K-pop. But I saw them front row yesterday and I have yet to recover. I will, I'm so excited to show you all of the clips. Like my ult buy is completed. 
a heart with me. So I'm, yep. Let's get on to reading. Never in my life have I done an update standing in my living room, but I'm about to take pictures with Addie before we go to the concert. And I just wanted to update real quick about Sorcerer of Thorns. I made it to page 190, chapter 18. And I think there's gonna be a romance in this book. And a lot of shit has happened to Elizabeth. Poor baby, she does not deserve this. And it's stressing me out and it's making me a little sad. And that's my update for now. I'm gonna read like a little bit more heading to the concert. Let's cut to yesterday because yesterday we got to see Stray Kids front row and those are the clips I'm going to include in this vlog. So enjoy or skip forward. What are we doing today? Ah, we're seeing Stray Kids! We're totally calm. Uh, we're seeing them yeah. front row. <laughs> We get to see them for sound check, and then we're gonna be in the front row for the entire concert, and I don't know how to act. Michelle with the bang, bang, bang. Imagine being the neighbors and seeing this. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs>
This is Nino. All right, what's up? This is Hunt in the building. Hey, you good to go. Hey. What's up, Felix here? Hello, everyone. It's your Australian boy, Bang Chan. Hang in the building. Hey, I'm your big dog, Sam. I'm your galaxy, Changbi. We started off the show with a song called Maniac. So I mean, what was after Maniac? We had Venom. Thank you, thank you. Good boy. And after <laughs> that, we had her. We had me. <laughs> we had her. Right. You're right. <laughs> you're right. Unfortunately, you're right. Definitely. What did we have after Venom, I am? Green lights. Green lights. <laughs> green lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Green lights. Green lights. Yeah. All right, thank you. Yeah, what was after heaven?
feel really, I feel really good because I, I, I was looking at everyone, and then some people were like, <laughs> and then I saw another stage, she was like, and that I was, was like, me. <laughs> <laughs> and I got my eyes on you guys. I was so flamed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a bad idea. Also lost my voice a little bit, so like don't mind that. But this is Lexi. 
If you haven't met her before, she's got a YouTube channel link below. Go subscribe. But today we are hiking and reading, which is like so fun. We used to hike at this one place like every single year back when we were in high school. And we haven't been back in like three years. Adulthood is wild. Adulthood is wild. And she moved to Missouri. I did. So there's also that. But she's here for spring break. For spring break. <laughs> for spring break. And so she was like, hey. Dry Creek? And I was like, Dry Creek? Let's go. Um, the book I will be picking up, like I mentioned um, yesterday, Sorcerer of Thorns, I still have a good chunk to go on page 190. I will be she picking up Kingdom of the Wicked, which is upside down. Kingdom of the Wicked. Look at this aesthetic though. Like, hello? <laughs> Twins. Which is perfect because I literally bought her Kingdom of the Feared and Kingdom of the... Other one. Kingdom of the other one? What is it called? The Curse. Kingdom of the Curse and Kingdom of the Feared for her birthday. And so it was so perfect that she started reading the series. Literally yesterday. Literally read your mind. I was like, I'm gonna anticipate you reading this. Right. You did. We're just that in sync. So in sync. All right, let's go. Nice. That used to say Dry Creek. Here's the situation. Solution? Unknown. Teleporters, watch. We've made it to the dry creek area. Clearly not a very dry creek. <laughs> uh, we've got a little bit further before we actually stop to like read and such, but we made it over like the difficult part, which was like the entire first half of the hike. Now I it's will... just fun parkour. Now it's just parkour. Yeah, it's super fun. And yeah, when we get to a spot to read, I will update you then. This is my rock now. We found our spot. Isn't it pretty? We read for about 45-ish minutes. minutes. It was so peaceful. It was great. As our noses are just like running because of our allergies. <laughs> but it was so peaceful. And I ended up making it to page 270 of Sorcerer Thorn. So I read just under 100 pages. Probably around 80 pages. Yeah, I can math. 80 I pages. read like 30. How That's are you okay. liking it so far? Pretty good. It's fun. I like the witchcrafty... It's based in Italy, which I didn't expect. I don't think I've ever read a book based in Italy. Fun fact. So it's a fun time. So, but I'm about to page 70 now. I really enjoy the pacing of this book. It's very fast paced. Things are just kind of like happening. 
and yeah, it's just been like really fun. The descriptions of when she's in the library is just so good. She like grabbed a book off the shelf and the description of that was like just so pretty. It was like, it slipped free of like its companions or something like that. And I was like, that is so good. I really like that <laughs> sentence. Like just how they were described it. I was like, oh, I love that. I'm not really here for the plot. I just want things to happen between the two characters. <laughs> the plot's like interesting-ish. Okay, but, but Silas is great. I love Silas. Silas is like Silas there. Silas is top tier. Silas is top tier for sure. I love him in his cat form. It's great. Flufferton, so cute. But yeah, we're gonna head, <laughs> we're gonna head back and probably read a little bit more, but like in AC. Not not the wilderness with like bugs crawling and branches falling into our books. So but it's for the aesthetic, so it's okay. <laughs> for the vibe. Hello, it is now the morning of the Tuesday, Wednesday. It's Wednesday now. One day I'll actually know what day it is before I start speaking. Um, last night we ended up watching some Ruby and just hanging out. Did a little bit more reading, but not really that much. But today we're heading over to the Full Cup and I'm actually bringing two books. I'm going to continue my read of Sorcery of Thorns. Um, I don't have that many pages left, around 200-ish, maybe a little under 200 pages left, but I'm also going to be bringing volume one of Orange. This is the bind up, like I mentioned earlier, of the first three volumes, and I think I might start with this, kind of depending on my mood, in the next 10 minutes when we get there, <laughs> of whether or not I want to start with this or dive back into Sorcerer of Thorns, but very excited to go back to the coffee shop. I'm also reading. I'm still on Kingdom of the Wicked. We will see you at the coffee shop. Not our in sync thumbs up, <laughs> please. I can't. shop and I actually managed to finish all of Orange, the complete collection volume one. I should have known better to not read this in a public setting because I was sat there holding back tears the entire time and there are some sections where I literally was like really really tearing up and just like oh my god oh my god oh my god I cannot cry sitting in this coffee shop that would be so embarrassing but it is just such a beautiful manga about friendship which like I know a lot of mangas do have that sort of like story aspect element situation in it but this one is just so sad and so sweet and some of the like sacrifices that characters make for other characters happiness is just incredible i had so much fun rereading this and it's such feels silly to say it's a comfort book considering that like it has made me cry every single time i read it but it really is so comforting and i think one day i want to go back I, i'm going to japan um, later this year, but I'm going to Tokyo, Kyoto, and Osaka. And this actually takes place in Matsumoto, and I would love to one day visit there and just visit the spots that they mention in this book. I think that would be like such a fun little adventure. But yeah, five out of five stars. It was a reread, like I mentioned, but <sighs> I love this story so much. And book two, I know, is going to make me cry so hard, so I'm going to actually make sure that I read that at home and not out in public. Yeah, so if you do read this book and you cry easily, don't read it in a public setting, but do read it. It is very, very sweet. Uh, check the trigger warnings though, because it does deal with some difficult topics and difficult situations that characters go through. Um, so make sure you check those, but oh my God, it gets me every time. Then I actually made like a little bit more progress into Sorcerer of Thorns and I'm on page 348. Apparently this was enemies to lovers, so I am very happy with that certain development. It definitely was like a slow burn and the romance isn't a main plot point, which I kind of enjoy. I really do love the pacing of this book. Things are just constantly happening. Characters keep getting themselves in like some sketchy situations and it's just really fun. At one point, Elizabeth had to go kind of undercover at, I don't want to spoil anything, but she went kind of undercover and I really enjoyed that whole segment with the actions she took and I really thought they um, took out one of my favorite characters, but luckily they didn't. Just really, really enjoying the plot. Just 
The fast pacedness is exactly what I needed. It's probably like a 4.25 right now. I'm excited to finish the last 100 or so pages, so it should be a fun time. But I actually have a little package here that was kindly sent to me by one of my friends, Anna, and I think she said it was like bookish related. I honestly can't remember what she said, but I also don't have scissors with me. I never have scissors with me. Should I just struggle or should I get up and get scissors? I think I'll just struggle. I think we're just gonna struggle. The things I go through instead of just grabbing a pair of scissors, but I was successful. This is slightly terrifying, I'm not gonna lie. Anna, I'm slightly terrified. I do not want this looking at me. Aww. That's so cute. That's so me. It was me at the coffee shop today with Lexi. I'm just like, I'm just gonna, one more chapter and then we can leave. One, one more chapter and then I'll, uh, and then I'll leave. What, just one more. I just kept getting sucked back into the story. Okay, there's a card and a maybe book. This is so cool. It's the German copy of Harry Potter. And this is really meaningful because this is kind of how Anna and I became friends was through our love for Harry Potter. And before she left back to Hungary, I actually had given her a box full of like Harry Potter goodies. And so it's just like really, really meaningful that, you know, she sent something back like kind of related to that. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Anna. Stop. It's a long note and I'm gonna cry. Okay. No, that's literally, <laughs> that's literally what she said. She said, I'm pretty sure we became friends talking about Harry Potter and still whenever anything Harry Potter related comes to my mind, I always think of you. That's so sweet. I miss her so much. Anyways. <laughs> Ooh, collect myself a little bit here. I just want to do like a little update on my reading and then hopefully I'll read a little bit more tonight. I know Katie and I have a Simon Hate Fest, aka watching the Shadowhunter TV show date planned tonight, and then maybe I'll get in a little bit of reading because I'm realizing, as I always do, today is Wednesday and I have my discussion on Stormglass this Saturday, and so I need to pick that up pretty soon here, but I do want to finish Sorcerer of Thorns first. So yeah, I'll update you later tonight after work. Hello, today is actually Friday. Technically, it's Saturday and it's one in the morning, which is why I'm talking a little bit quieter because my roommate is asleep and I don't want to wake her up. But I do actually have kind of a big reading update. Um, I finished Sorcery of Thorns last night and then I finished Stormglass tonight. And if you're like, wow, Cass, um, that was quick. That's because I started Stormglass tonight and finished it tonight. Uh, and then Sorcerer of Thorns, I was picking out on my phone for the past couple of days and it just hadn't done a reading update. I don't know if I like this camera angle either. How are we feeling about this camera angle? I feel like something is off. Is this better or am I just going crazy? I don't know, but we're just going to talk briefly about Sorcerer of Thorns. I did end up giving it a four star. I wish I could have rated it higher. I think the beginning kind of captivated me a little bit more than when the plot started kicking in. I was like, well, I'm like semi-interested. Like I wanted to see how everything turned out. And then it just became a little bit too predictable in my opinion, which was a little sad because I don't like being able to predict books. I don't want to know what happens. I want to be surprised at every corner. And so typically when I do read books, I try not to be too analytical about them and try to predict anything because I, like I said, I'm the type of reader that I don't want to know what's gonna happen. But this book was just giving like some glaringly obvious clues and hints and things that was pointing at. It was like the big arrows, just like, hey, this is what's happening next. And I was like, don't tell me that. And as for the relationship aspect of this book, cause I was excited. I was like, yes, there's gonna be romance. Sure. It's uh, this better not be marketed as a fantasy romance book because that is not enough romance to justify it being a fantasy romance book at all. I did really like the environment that this was set in. Like I said, Margaret Rogerson's descriptions of things were just so, so stunning. I just felt like I wanted a little bit more, but I can't pinpoint exactly what more I would have wanted. I did enjoy reading this book, especially, especially when I was out at Dry Creek with Lexi. Reading on a moss rock, reading this book on a moss rock was just the perfect vibe and I loved it so much. But yeah, just a solid four stars. I'm glad I read it. I do not regret reading it and I'm very glad that I own it. So thank you once again, Darcy. I hope this satisfies you. Um, and then as for my other book, oh boy. I, I just read any Goodreads review on this book and I'm like, yes, 
That is exactly all of my thoughts to start this book. So <laughs> I was bored. I was so incredibly bored and I would have DNF this book probably 70 pages in. 70 pages in was where I was like, nothing is happening why what is happening like there is nothing going on the first little part of the story definitely had me intrigued it definitely felt very like annie-esque like an orphan gets adopted by a rich person and then she's now the key to changing you know society and whatnot but it's interesting because this was planned as a five book series and the fact that the first book gave you little to nothing for like 80 percent of the book really showed that he was trying to drag it out to be five books. I think 70% of this book could have been chopped. Literally, this entire center right here, chop it out because it's unnecessary. You can skip all the way to like the 80% mark after reading like the first 10% and I think everything would still click and make sense and you're like, oh, okay, that's cool. It dragged so, I was so bored. It's been forever since I've been this bored with a book because even with books that I have to push through and finish that I cannot DNF, there's something keeping me going. You know, there's like a little, little something, something, whether that's like a character that I do really like or like a plot point that I'm interested in. I just could not care less about any of these characters. And something else that really got me was that these characters are supposed to be 12. The little girls were following their 12. And some of their actions do not, do not match their age. I am like, sir, you don't look like you've ever been a 12 year old girl. And it's clear through writing these perspectives that I feel like how the narrator's voice was felt so much older than the way these characters actually were. And it was so off-putting because in my head, these characters were speaking and think like their actions and like their thoughts and stuff. I was like, these bitches are too smart to be 12 and like uneducated. One of the main characters, Seti, she grew up in like the slums basically with no education. And yet she speaks and has these thoughts and these breakthroughs and makes like a scientific discovery. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You expect me to just believe that? There are so many unexplained things in this book that make me angry because nothing makes sense. There's like the floating islands, which I thought was a cool environment world situation. I was like, cool, floating estates. And if the estates go broke, the bank can literally just like sink their island essentially and have it crashing down. That's freaking cool. Like really sketchy, really sketchy, really dangerous, but a cool point. But then there's also ghosts and there's also like magic. One of the characters had like healed someone with magic and everything is just called the mysteries and i'm like okay cool but you are also keeping the reader enveloped in a massive mystery of not knowing what like the world just felt so messy i think the author was trying to just shove too many different elements that he was like oh that's a cool idea that's also a cool idea but then put together was just like a, a mosh podge of just a mess nothing made sense in this book and i was incredibly bored so reading a book where I didn't like the main characters because they didn't act their age, didn't have thoughts their age, and just were very bland and cliche. Reading a book where I was bored the entire time, reading a book where the plot made no sense, and reading the book, oh my goodness, this read like a classic almost. There were so many words in this book and so many just, not even good sentences, just too many words per sentence which is a weird thing to complain about, but I felt like I was reading a classic. I was on a call with Katie earlier when I was telling her that this read like a classic and she goes, ah, but it's not a classic. So you can't be all like pretentious about it after reading it. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. It was interesting because in the acknowledgements or in the author's note, he had, he had said he loved his British lit class, reading Charles Dickens, reading Bleak House, kind of Jane Austen, Elizabeth Gaskell, Anthony Trollope, the Bronte sisters. And I'm like, okay. So that's where his style was inspired from, clearly, and it is not, in fact, my cup of tea. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I do not recommend the series, clearly by my two-star rating. The only reason it got two stars instead of one star was because the end got, like, a little bit interesting in terms of, like, scandal and the politics happening. I was like, that's cool. Why couldn't we have started with that? Why did we need 300 pages of nothingness to get to the last 50 pages where something mildly interesting happened? Why couldn't we have just cut out everything 
in the middle because I think the whole reason why Jeff Wheeler had this, you know, beginning 300 pages was for you could connect to Seti and Sarah, who are the main girls in this book. Sarah is like the the rich, the rich child inherited. She's gonna inherit something. I don't even, I literally just finished this book and I can't even, I just couldn't care. I couldn't care to even like try to commit anything about this book to my memory. Um, and then Seti's our poor girl. I don't remember what I was saying about them. Oh, the 300 pages. Like, I feel like you're supposed to connect to the characters during these 300 pages if you could sympathize with them. And I did, but I did not need 300 pages to do so. And even so, they still felt like a cliche 12-year-old bratty child slash, I don't know, not 12-year-old? I don't know. I'm kind of over ranting about this book, to be honest. I'm really disappointed, though, because this is a book club book for my Patreon and... Yeah, I'm just really, really curious to see what the others who show up during our discussion will say about this book. I think this is getting an unhaul during my next unhaul, for sure. Yikes, so much was happening, but nothing was happening at the same time, which makes no sense to me. Anyways, it is now 107. I've been blathering on for almost 10 minutes, so I do apologize. Uh, I just wanted to update you about what I was about to do before I go to bed, because I could get eight hours of sleep or I could read a book that I know is going to make me cry. I, the entire time I was reading Stormglass, I just wanted to sit down and pick up Orange, the complete collection volume two. And I want to read something that I want to read. So I'm going to sit here and I'm going to read this book because I want to read it. And I'll let you know if I cry. <laughs> it got me. <laughs> I'm not even that far in. <laughs> This is a book that I give five stars. It hurts. <laughs> I've ugly cried like three times. <sighs> I love this manga so much. Okay, good night for real, y'all. <laughs>
I'm here to wrap up this vlog, and yes, I'm wearing the exact same shirt that I started this vlog out with, but I am now obsessed with this hoodie, so um, be prepared to see me in it a lot. I am really happy with the amount of reading I got done. Like, I read quite a few books, and I didn't actually finish Miss Born. I, I just made a decent chunk of the way into it. And let me actually start with that one because this is like the thing I spent last night reading, and I am obsessed. It took me a little bit longer to get into the story than it did with Warbreaker, and I only mention that because it's my only other Brandon Sanderson book, so it's the only one I can compare it to. However, now that I understand the magic system, it is literally so, so creative with the different metals that they burn that give them like their different powers and enhanced existence, basically. It is so, so cool. I'm really connecting with Vin as a character. I just love her type of character, which is kind of like dark and like trusts no one. And I really hope we can see her kind of open up and start to trust people since she's had kind of a shitty life. I'm on page 212. And I'm just very, very excited to finish this book and continue on with Mistborn before I can get to the other one. What is it called? Oh my, The Way of Kings. What is that series called? Yeah, I, I can't remember what it's called, but you know, The Way of Kings, that series. I'm very excited to pick up that one. I've heard that's his best series yet, but Mistborn is still super duper fun. And I can't wait to finish that. Just not in this vlog, probably the next one. Briefly, two stars, Stormglass, didn't love it. I ranted for like 10 minutes about it, so I'm not gonna rant anymore because I will spare y'all. <laughs> yeah, that is no thoughts, head empty, it's getting unhauled. <laughs> um, then I finished Sorcery of Thorns, which I rated a four stars. It was really fun. It was very action-packed in the beginning. It lost me a little bit in the middle when the plot started dragging and the ending was pretty decent. Like I said, it became a little bit too predictable for me to like give five stars or a higher rating, but I enjoyed it while I was in the universe. Anything set in an old library, I'm like, yes, give it to me. I freaking love it. Then I read my favorite manga ever, Orange. I read the bind up of volume one and the bind up of volume two. Five stars for both of these. This one made me sob. This one I held back tears in the coffee shop, as you saw, but I really, really love this series. I will not shut up about it, and I already talked so much about it in this vlog, so I will also spare you. But that is all the books that I ended up reading. I hope y'all enjoyed this vlog. I do sort of apologize for the concert clips, but y'all have the power to skip through it. If you sat and watched, maybe you should stand Stray Kids. I don't know. Thank you so much to my lovely Patreons over on KSX Cast. It is our book club where we have a monthly buddy read, some behind the scenes content and extra videos, and it's just a chaotic fun time over there. And thank you to all of you for watching. I really, really hope to see you in the next one. Doodles!